How many sung a new song? All right, good. And uh, who can tell me what song they liked best that they sung a new song on New Song Night? Uh, we've got uh, <clears throat> what a, When the Savior Reached Down for Me, Psalm 139. And uh, then we've got a Love That Won't Stop, In Christ Alone, or Oh, What a Savior. Anybody have a favorite out of those? Yes. Oh, what a Savior. The last one? Yes. Okay, good. Jennifer? Okay, good. All right, well, well, yeah, good. How many liked all the new songs? All right, well, we'll, we'll work on some of these and implement them, and uh, good. I'm going to be in uh, Second Chronicles this evening. It'll be a, a shorter message. We planned on that because the extra singing and, the, you know, we had to raise, raise things for treasure hunting stuff, but uh, hopefully we'll <clears throat> get uh, all that we need to fill our cups for this week. And Second uh, Chronicles, chapter 31, I'm going to start uh, with the last two verses in the chapter, give you a little context, then I'll give you some thoughts here. Second Chronicles, chapter 31, and, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, verse uh, uh, 20 and 21, and th- thus uh, did, he- did Hezekiah throughout all Judah... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, uh, did, did throughout all Judah, and uh, and and we're gonna we, we've talked about Hezekiah a little bit. Um, was it Thursday when he talked about um, Manasseh? And Hezekiah was when he really had great revival, and God uh, used him, and uh, and he was a great king, just wonderful, and what a blessing he was, and wrought that which is good in the sight of the Lord, um, before the Lord is God. And every work that he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments, uh, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. Wouldn't you like to get to the end of your life and somebody said, all the things you did um, for the Lord prospered, and you did it with all of your heart. I want to talk tonight about uh, how we should serve the Lord, how we should serve the Lord. Let's go ahead and pray. <clears throat> and Lord, we just, uh, we come to you tonight, we're thankful for the singing we got to praise you with, learn some new songs for you, Lord, thank you for the verses we just read, thank you, we get to talk to you right now in prayer, what a blessing, Lord, it is, prayer is, Lord, it's such a refuge, it's such a important thing, because we need so many things, Lord, and tonight our need is spiritual blessing, the Holy Spirit, for uh, us to hear from you, I need to hear from you, Lord, I need you, to uh, help me, to encourage me, to speak to my heart, to give me new truth, to set me free. And Lord, uh, we all need your word. Your, the entrance of your word gives light. Your, your word is, uh, we, we long for it more than a necessary food. It's so important, and uh, it can make us thoroughly perfect, furnished unto every good work. So we pray tonight that we be fed of the word, and uh, by the spirit, rightly divide it. Bless every person who came. Thank you for all these precious souls, I think of how much I love them and how good a people they are. Um, but good people need uh, spiritual strength because the devil goes after them more. So please uh, speak to us and encourage us and help us tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Hezekiah um, saw a transferring revival of his nation, and the nation was transformed. And you can go back and, and read this story. He opens the house of God. He finds the scriptures like similar to what Josiah did. He had a heart for God and began to bring revival and bring God's worship back, get rid of the evil stuff of the nation, and uh, and really do a great, a great, great work for God. And uh, he did it a certain way. And how he served God, I believe, led to all the blessings because he had a lot of battles. When you go into chapter 29, and we won't go too much into it, <clears throat> You just find him uh, getting that heart, and uh, he took some steps here in verse uh, uh, 3, 4, and 5. He goes and starts uh, sanctifying God's house and cleansing it, and, uh, and, then, and then later in the chapter, in verse 10 and 11, they make a covenant with God. Um, the covenant was, God, we're going to follow you, and we want the blessings you promised, and they renewed that covenant as a nation, but then the nation was a big mess. Uh, <clears throat> The uh, priests weren't all purified. <clears throat> Excuse me, the timing was wrong. There's just a lot of problems 
Um, they couldn't get everything together for the holy days. It was a mess. He, he had so much to do, but he pushed for it. And I love that um, because, um, I, 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 look, I find it better to go forward in, 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 in a lot of things in your life and push and try to get where you want to get. And you don't quite get there, but you make a ton more progress. Then those who say, well, if everything was like this and this and this, I will get there someday and I'll try work on it. And, you know, if this lined up, I do this, but it's not lined up and you don't get very far. OK, um, you know, we like to reach the world. If we don't have that in mind, we're not going to do very much. Will we reach the world? I don't know. We're trying. But in that with that goal and pushing and trying and striving, as Paul said, I press toward the mark. You know, if you push to be a perfect Christian and push to be all that God wants you to be, and, and you make a lot of progress. And he just pushed, and all of a sudden they came toward a holy day, and he says, oh, man, we don't have everything purified. We don't have the right offerings. We don't have the right priests. Lord, please help us make it work. And Lord, just accept that what we're going to do for you. And, and they started rushing to try to purify things, and God kind of gave them some grace, and they, they really had a lot of great things. The nation was really turned back to God, and God accepted what they did. <clears throat> And uh, when Hezekiah prayed, when they weren't close enough, uh, if you go to chapter uh, 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 chapter 30 in verse, um, you, you find him praying for, Lord, we're not quite ready. We're not quite ready, but Lord, their, their heart is for you. They want to serve you. And, uh, and, and he said, can you just give us grace and, uh, and let this work? And in uh, verse, uh, um, verse 18, it says, the multitude of the people, even many uh, of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun had not cleansed themselves yet, nor uh, uh, yet they did eat of the Passover and prayed. Uh, for, thank you. Uh, and they prayed. And he and Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, "The good Lord pardon every one that uh, prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, through uh, uh, though he had not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. It, was, it just wasn't time. The, there wasn't the pe enough people to purify the people, but they wanted to come to the holy day and sacrifice and just come to God. And look what God did in verse 20. He says, The Lord uh, hearkened uh, to Hezekiah and healed the people. They weren't sanctified, but God did it. And I want to say, You'll find if you're pushing and trying and say, God, just give me some grace. Lord, I know I'm not there yet. Would you bless me? Any? Would you help me with this? God blesses those who are pushing and trying. But if you're going to sit back and say, well, I'm just not good enough ever and, and get pouty and don't try, don't expect God to take you the extra mile and bless you. God loves a sincere heart and, 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 and you're, you're, you're working on it. And so it just went good. It went really good. And he was blessed in a lot of ways. <clears throat> and, uh, he said, everything he put his hand to prospered. Now, in this message, I want to talk about how you should serve the Lord. And I'm talking about that because of Hezekiah. Because there's other things that are important that we talk about a lot. We, I think it's important what you do. And that's something that we talked about this morning. I think it's important why you do it. The right motivations are proper in the Bible. And you can do things to be seen of men and other things. And the Bible covers that. And uh, it's important... Um, where you do it. You know, Jonah found that out. And, uh, and, and so all these things matter, what you're doing, why you do it, where you do it. These things matter. But I want to say it also matters how you do it. Let's say you're going to praise the Lord. Well, the Bible kind of talks about how to praise the Lord. And there's, there's a way you should do it. And Hezekiah, it kind, of, it kind of lifts him up and says, hey, he did it right and he prospered. And look at verse back at the end of the chapter here in uh, chapter 31 and verse 21. And in every work, work uh, that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law uh, and in the commandments to seek uh, his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. How do you serve the Lord? I just want to give you a few things on how to serve the Lord. And number one, it's right here in this verse, is serve him with all your heart. With all your heart. That's how we're supposed to serve the Lord. Let me just swing it back to Deuteronomy chapter 10. I'll just hit some other verses here. But serve the Lord with all of your heart. And, and I think that's the way God wants it. Love the Lord with all your heart, but he served him with all of his heart. In Deuteronomy <clears throat> in chapter 10 and 
verse 12. Uh, and now, Israel, uh, what doth the Lord uh, thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Man, with all thy heart, when you really see that God commands that there, you see Hezekiah being blessed because he's doing it. Think of what you do and what all of us do with all of our hearts. Now, we don't have time to try to figure out what each one of us does, but we do things all of our hearts. For some people, it might be play sports. And when they play, they just throw, don't care about their body. They throw their whole body into it. When they cheer, if they're watching their sport, they do it with all their heart, and they're screaming at the top. They mess their voice up, and they have no voice the next day. They spend all their money in the gear. They, they cheer for their team with all their heart. They're pounding things, making signs, because they're doing that with all their heart. Think of everything you have. As Paul said, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel of them which be at Rome. How much is in you? I mean, when you give your everything to something. Now, I don't know what you do that in. It could be video games. It could be when you're in the world the way you partied. And you partied with all of your heart and all of your energy. It could be your education you went for. It could be some hobby. I mean, when you go and you're fishing or you're hunting or whatever, you are doing it with everything you have, all of your energy. It is your passion. You read about it. You study it. You, your heart with all of your heart. We, we put our heart into a lot of things. Some people shop with all their hearts. They put their passion into that. Some people write. Some people read with all their hearts. You ever tried to, you ever tried to get between one of those readers and their book? It's like, Hello? And they don't even know it. They don't, they don't understand a hand is between you and the book. And they, they, just, they, don't, even, they don't even try to say, can you move your hand? They just, they just look around. <laughs> and, and because they're reading with all their heart. Somebody's researching their favorite subject. They're into cars and, and hot rods. And, that, and they put their whole money, their life, their heart, their passion into it. There's so many things that people can put their heart into. And they do it with all their heart. Some people do it with fashion. Some, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'm not saying these things to be critical. I'm saying you should serve the Lord with all your heart. I've seen people, I mean, it's a weird, it's like, it's like a switch. Click, you just click it on and off. And I'll see somebody out there, and they, they're, 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 they want to play basketball. And when they play basketball, they're screaming, they're trash talking, they're, they're sweating like a dog, they're running, they're falling down, they're skinned up, they don't care, rub a little dirt on it, they don't care. And it's like, ah! They scream when their team loses, and then while they're yelling at their, their, their teammates, why didn't you pass it? Why'd you miss it? Then you say, hey, man, want to come to church tomorrow? I'm really tired, man. That's not, I don't know if I can get up. Well, you seem to be a person with a lot of energy and passion, but not for that. That's kind of strange. You can get up at 4 in the morning, 3 in the morning to go hunting, but you can't get up at 9 in the morning to go to church. Hmm. Oh, you found money to go buy lunch, but you didn't have money to tithe. Hmm. It's getting interesting. Boy, those are like new clothes. Well, I just really needed them. Your, your, your life's energy goes to something. I, and I, I, I can, there's a thousand things. I mean, it goes to politics, it goes to guns, it goes to marches it goes to it goes to whatever it, it goes to nature it goes to whatever it, it goes to with all of your heart hezekiah prospered and accomplished unbelievable things because he lived with passion for the things of god and he gave his whole heart to it and most of the time when you say yeah i'm just really tired no i don't read a bible but when your favorite show is on do you find a way to binge watch it same person who says, you know, I'm really, I just, I'm tired when I read on the Bible. The same person who lays in bed and does this. With all of your heart. Do you serve the Lord with all of your heart? Do you give your energy to it? Do you give your passion to it? All that passion you have for something, for whatever. Uh, the passion you pursue someone you love with. The passion 
that you go to get your career going. The passion you put in your first day of work when you're trying to make it and impress your boss. The passion of a secular singer for wicked words. Do they have more passion than you have for God? Serve the Lord with all of your heart. That's how you should serve him. I've, I thank God I've never really known anything else. I got around churches like that. I surrounded myself with Christians like that. I went to Bible college that was like that. And I've been a pastor of this church like that. I, I really don't get why you would live halfway for God. He'd rather you be hot or cold and lukewarm. I don't understand people having passion for so many things, but, but uh, to the things of God. I, I don't get it. I, this is eternal stuff. This is lasting for trillions of years. And this is what's important. And, 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 and you should be able to make it and, and, and do these things. With all of your heart, that's how you're supposed to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Passionate about serving God with all your heart. Amen? Amen. <laughs> okay. I, I, how are you doing? The sea? Well, luckily, you're in church this morning. You didn't watch the Seahawks game, but I don't think I tell you to cheer. Score a touchdown. Yay. We won. <laughs> serve the Lord with all of your heart. Amen. Amen. Number two, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Chapter 29. Ch chapter 29 and verse. You know, it's, fun. I, 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 it, it's a funny thing to me. It's always been funny to me. Did you know that Christians love, even if they aren't, they love a passionate Christian? Even if they aren't? That's been, I, that has been my... I have seen that my whole Christian life. People love somebody who's on fire for God and passionate about living for God. They just don't want to do that. But they know it's the best thing, and they like when somebody else does that. Man, live that way. With all of your heart, give God your best, not your leftovers. Don't throw God what's left over of your meal and say, God, here, I got something for you. Here's the bones. And don't do that with your energy and your passion and your love. Number two, serve the Lord with gladness. Chapter 29 uh, we see them doing that here. And verse uh, 30. Moreover, Hezekiah, uh, the king, uh, and the princes commanded the Levites and uh, uh, the Levites to sing praises unto the Lord with the words of David. They're going to sing the Psalms and Asaph, uh, the, the, the seer. And they sang praises with gladness. And they bowed their heads and worshipped. They sang praises with gladness. Let's go to Psalm 100. They had a gladness to them. And you know, God likes that. He seems to like when you like serving him. Psalm uh, chapter 100 and verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Goodness. Amen. Can, you, can you imagine if you went to a restaurant? <clears throat> you probably had this before at some point. And the waitress served you with no gladness. Walks up. All right, what do you guys want today? Medium, over, a, over easy. How do you want your eggs? You ever been to somebody? Who, I've, I've taken a lot of poor people to eat at a restaurant. And, uh, and that question gets a lot of people. How would you like your eggs? And they, just, they freeze. They don't know what that means. One guy said, Chicken. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and so usually I kind of tell them, you want them scrambled? And they, they usually say that whatever you say the first thing. But uh, I like the chicken one best. I say, ostrich, say ostrich. And, uh, and, and but, but <clears throat> what if you, what, how do you want your eggs? Uh, all right. All right, here's your food. I got to bring it to you. you you're, you're paying the bill. Here it is. You want your coffee filled? You know, they might feel like that, but you don't want someone who just seems like they're miserable serving you, right? You don't want that. How about if it's your birthday and your brother comes to you and says, hey man, I got a present for you. I want to give you a present. You say, oh, it's going to be good. What if your brother comes to you and says, mom made me buy you a present. Here, here's your present. Are you going to enjoy that present? Depends on what it is. And, uh, and, uh, but, but you want, you don't want somebody giving you a present if they say, I had to give this to you. Can you imagine 
Can you imagine your fiance doing that? <laughs> so dumb, I have to bow down. <laughs> you know how much this ring costs, but here, will you marry me? I guess I gotta, pro I gotta propose to you. Would you like that? And yet, people act like <laughs> serving the God of the universe is like pulling teeth, getting their teeth pulled. Serve the Lord with gladness. Have a good time serving God. Be glad you get to serve the Lord. You get the opportunity to say thank you back to him. Man, I, why would somebody want to go to church when everybody at church is miserable and don't want to be there? I'm so glad we don't have that. I'm so glad we have people who seem to love being at church and, 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 and have joy in it. And they get to go and read their Bible and they get to pray and they get. Uh, and I know, I know sometimes it will fight you. I know the flesh is weak. I understand that. We get that. But there is a mood to some Christians. It's like, hey, let's serve the Lord. And they serve the Lord with gladness because they love him, because they appreciate him that if Jesus died for me, I can live for him. And Lord, here's a gift for you. Amen. Later on, it says, Lord, love the cheerful giver. We'll read that. He says, God says, I like it when you want to give to me. When you do that, when you act like you're glad that, that, that you get to do something for me. Serve the Lord with gladness. You would want somebody to bring you a gift that way. Look, let's, let's go to that verse, 2 Corinthians and chapter 9. This is how you serve the Lord. Number one, you serve him with all your heart. Number two, how to serve the Lord is serve the Lord with gladness. 2 Corinthians and chapter 9. <clears throat> and verse 7 uh, and 8, talking about giving here. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye may always, having all sufficiency in all, in all things, uh, may abound to every good work. He says, hey, don't give because you have to. A cheerful giver. They're happy about it. They want to give to God. When you put the two together with all of your heart and cheerfully, you get such blessings, God's people give such service that that it's that 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 they give such service that God's work gets done prosperously. Let's look at Exodus chapter 36. Watch these people wanted to give, and they gave with all their heart. We'll read a couple different parts of this story throughout the message. But Exodus, they gave cheerfully and they gave with all their heart, and that combination makes it so that there's more than enough energy, finances. Uh, 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 workers to do God's work when people do it with the right heart and they serve God properly, which is cheerfully and with all their heart. Uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 36, and uh, let's read verses 3 through 7. And they received of Moses all the offerings which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary. They're getting ready to make the, 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 ta the tabernacle and they're bringing their offerings for it. And, uh, and, and people want, they want to be a part of it, uh, to make it with all. And they brought, uh, 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 and they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Now notice, there's required offerings in the Bible, but there's also free will offerings and free offerings where you did it because you want to. They, th this wasn't a required offering. It was, do you, hey, bring an offering to, uh, and to help build the temple the tabernacle that we're going to build. <clears throat> build the Ark of the Covenant, build the tent, build all the furniture and everything in there. And, uh, and so they did it. And all the wise, uh, let's see, did we, we read verse uh, 3, I think, there? Um, and uh, in verse 4, it says, And all the wise men that wrought the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work uh, which he had made, and they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. We had a, one of our, you know, sometimes in a service, I'll just say, hey, we've got to raise this money for this thing. And we just raise the money in the service for a vehicle or, or for a church roof or whatever we we're doing at that time. I don't even remember what it was um, we did. And I just, I just said, I, I, I remember it was, I, I remember, no, it was, it was a, uh, it was for a, it was for the uh, the church van I think in uh, 
in Alaska. It could have been. It could have been a vehicle in the Philippines. I don't know. I don't remember. Everything's behind me. I always forget it, what we did. And uh, we raised the money. And, uh, and then the service said, we need, we need, I think we need $10,000 for something. And I said, uh, who wants to give to this? And how much you want to give? And, and it went, dun, 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 dun. And we raised the money and it was done. And we said, thank you, and make sure you give and, and put it in there, and we'll, we'll send the money off this week. And afterward, a visitor came to me and said, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, right there in the middle of service, the, all the money was raised, and we just changed somebody's life just like that. I've never seen anything like that. I said, you know, God's good to us, and, and we have people who love the Lord and want to help, and, want, and, and God blesses them because they want to do that. And, 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 and that, 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 how much that impact them to see that people wanted to do it. Amen. You know, I tell you this, the truth is, a lot of pastors even dread coming to the pulpit to preach. There's a burden to them. And I think people know that. It's like, man, this guy does not want to be here, and he is, man, he's working. He's, he's struggling. You probably see that for every one of my sermons. I'm struggling, but I want to be here. <clears throat> Why? Because I love to preach the Word of God. I love to teach people the Bible. Amen. Not only did I do it for free many years, I paid to do it. I had to bail a church's bills. I don't know how that worked. I got employed, and I paid to go do the job. And, uh, and uh, but, you know, I, 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 love preaching the Bible. I love studying the Bible. It's not a burden to me. I, it's, it's, it's a blessing. I want, I want to be glad when I serve the Lord. I want to sing to God with a joy. Those songs, you know, I got to be a little careful because my voice and, you know, voice problems that I have, and I want to, man, I want to belt out those songs tonight. Some of those songs are just beautiful, and I, and, and, and I do as much as I can, and I have to I have, to, I have to go lower, and I have to be careful with my voice because i got to preach in a while, and, you know, I have some voice problems. And so, I just, but, I, I, man, I want to. I love singing to the Lord. And, and by the way, you, you love singing what you're passionate about and what you like. People sing about passionately with their eyes closed and their hands raised and, and scream red face into a karaoke, 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 karaoke thing all the time. <laughs> And I just made a new word. I should copyright that. Yes. And uh, and uh, that's when you sing very bad. It's it's carry yucky, and uh, and uh, and 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 you sing and 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 they do it all the time with all their passion. And they sound horrible on a karaoke machine. They're killing the neighborhood. Yeah. Amen. But they're passionate about it, yeah. and they're glad. They're singing happily. We should serve the Lord with gladness. We serve the King of Kings. We love him with all of our heart. He's given us everything we have. And we should be glad to come to church. Glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's the way we should serve the Lord. That's how you serve the Lord. They, they gave so much. They said, hey, stop giving. We have more than enough. These people really love doing this. Yeah. And, and that's the way it is when people, with all their heart and with gladness. Number three, how should we serve the Lord with thanksgiving and praise? Since we're in, let's go back to Psalm 100. We should have stayed there. Psalm 100. I was joking with one of the kids when I got in, in church this morning when I got here. And, and I said, hey, you want to help me do some things? And they said, no. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to steal your treasure from heaven. And off I went. And I did. I stole their treasure from heaven. Amen. I got it. You can't get it now. Sorry, buddy. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't complain about this stuff. I don't, I, I like serving God. I, I don't mind my setting up the chairs and then you move them. Then I have to OCD set them again. I don't mind that. I'm going to kill you, but I don't mind moving the chairs again. And uh, I didn't mind filling the baptistry and I don't mind. I don't mind this. I like serving the Lord. This week we'll work in the building, work for the big day. It's a joy to serve the Lord and, and enjoy it. With thanksgiving and praise, Psalm 100. And uh, uh, Psalm 100 uh, talks about, in verse 4, it says, it says this, um, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That's how you come in the door. And be thankful unto him and bless his name. That's how you serve the Lord. Let's go back to uh, Second Chronicles. Let's go back to our story there and see it there. We'll probably be back in Psalm. Eh, let's see. Nope, we won't be back in there in Psalms. So let's go to Second Chronicles. How 
How do you serve the Lord? Second Chronicles. You ever had a coworker who complained about everything they were told to do? Yeah. Never seen that? I mean, everything. Hey, will you go uh, eat the rest of the candy over there? Uh, why do you make me do everything? I mean, it's just, they, just, they just are miserable about every single job that's given to them. I mean, it's actually, actually kind of impressive they can complain throughout an entire day. You ever someone do that? They, they literally get to work, complain about work, and they leave work complaining everywhere in between. It's like impressive. Like, how do you do that? How do you find that much to complain about? That's, it's, and, and some people do that, but we shouldn't be that. We shouldn't be that. Um, 2 Chronicles chapter 29 <clears throat> and, uh, and uh, verse 30. It says, moreover, um, that guy there, the king, um, and the princes commanded, Hezekiah, uh, the king, and the princes commanded the Levites and, uh, to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David and Asaph, the seer, and they sang praises with gladness. And they bowed their heads in worship. Notice that. They sang praises. And, uh, and they, they were glad to do it. It's just what they did. Uh, they sang praises unto the Lord. Thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. Chapter 30 and uh, uh, verse 21. And the children of Israel that were present in Jerusalem kept the feast of un- unleavened, br- unleavened bread seven days uh, with great gladness in the Levites. And the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. Uh, with thanksgiving and praise, praise the Lord and, and do it uh, willingly and gladly and often. Enter into his gates, come into his presence that way. Next, and the last one I want to say, how do we serve the Lord? We serve him uh, with all of our hearts, with gladness, with thanksgiving and praise, and lastly, willingly. Willingly. First Chronicles. Christianity is kind of unique. It's kind of different. And when you really get it, yes, you're bought with a price. Yes, God owns you. Yes, he is the Lord of the universe and has all authority. But God doesn't grab you by the back of the neck and make you do stuff. If you'd love me, keep my commandments. He wants so bad to have a close relationship and for you to love him enough to serve him will- willingly and gladly he kind of lets you do your own thing. And if you don't, you get punished. And if you do, you get blessed. But he says, I just want you to do it because you love me. Amen. I want you to want to give me glory. Uh, chapter 29, willingly. I love the word willingly. Chapter 29 and uh, verse 5. The gold, things, uh, the gold for the things of gold and the silver for the things of silver and all manner uh, and for all manner of work uh, to be made in the hands of the artif- uh, artificers. And, who, uh, and uh, who then is willing to consecrate his service to the, unto the Lord? This day unto the Lord. Who is willing? Notice the, verse 6. He says it again. Then the chief of all the fathers... Uh, and the princes and the tribes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and hundreds with the rulers of kings, what's it say? Offered willingly. There's that phrase again. Down to verse 9, then the people rejoiced that they offered willingly because the perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Man, do you think God could make it any more clear? willingly. What? Do you do it willingly? Do you want to do it? Uh, back, let me just give you a couple other passages. Exodus chapter 25. Willingly serve the Lord. When it's hard, when uh, 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 bad things have happened, you willingly keep on serving God. You willingly do it so that your parents don't have to force you, so that the pastor doesn't have to yell at you. Because you know what? I rarely ever yell at anybody. It's not, it's not, I, like, if you don't want to serve the Lord, you don't want to serve the Lord. I want you to be willing to do it. If, if you do it, you don't have a heart for it, you're really not pleasing God. I understand sometimes you're tired and your flesh doesn't want to do it, but your heart wants to do it. That's different. But he's saying, oh, brother, why do I have to do this? Why don't you want to do it? And do it for the Lord. 
Love the Lord. Exodus 25 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel that they may bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. Ye shall take my offering. There it is again. Remember that said that 2 Corinthians uh, 5, it says, let them give it willingly, cheerfully, uh, uh, of a willing heart. This is the way God likes it. Um, you can, you want to other references, you can do Judges 5, 2, and 4, and other verses where it talks about willingly. Let's go to Acts chapter uh, 2 and finish up there. I think the biblical pattern for Christianity is supposed to be people glad to serve the Lord, who are full of joy and full of peace, and people who love the Lord so much they're having a great time serving Him. That's the biblical pattern. And they should be happy. They should see us joyful. That was a testimony of the, of the book of Acts church, the New Testament church. Verse 42, Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And, uh, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and good and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued deadly, daily um, with, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added unto the church daily such as should be saved. You know, Hezekiah did it with his heart. They did it with praise. They worshiped God. They didn't do it walking, complaining. David talks so much about how you enter into his gates and how you enter into his courts. And we see that even in the New Testament, the continuing theme of they gladly served the Lord. They gladly went to church. They gladly gave. They rejoiced to do these things. That is how you serve the Lord. It's the grumpy Christianity is kind of contagious. The, the people, it's so hard, and oh man, I have to do that. That's really contagious. You'll get that. So is the joyful Christianity. It's also contagious. And I hope that you will serve the Lord in the right way. Now, you say, man, if I just am not feeling it, and, uh, and I am, you know, Pastor, there's just times where I just don't really want to go to church. I think you should go anyway. Okay, because maybe you'll fall more in love with Jesus and get more excited. And sometimes it's just the flesh and just the devil fighting you. I get it. But the general life of the Christian is, I give you a joy no man takes from you. My peace give I unto you. It is entering into his gates, entering his courts, loving him so much that you serve him gladly. And, and even... Uh, many of the martyrs singing praises as they were being martyred. Some of them saying, uh, do you have any regrets that you did not deny Christ? And, and, and I think it was Justin Martyr who said, I have one regret, and that is that I have only one life to give for my Lord. Just uh, people who really want to and want to serve the Lord. So how do you serve the Lord? Serve him with all your heart. Serve him with gladness. Serve him with thanksgiving. And serve him willingly. That's how you serve the Lord. There's a lot of things that you do for the Lord, but just serve them properly. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you. That